Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hello, it's, uh, I'm Mark Austin. It is Thursday, October 27th. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to check in with traffic and weather in a minute. But first, we begin with developing news in Austin. Any minute now, the director of the DPS, Steve McGraw, will be testifying before the Public Safety Commission about the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. He and his department have been at the center of the outrage over the delayed law enforcement response to the shooting. Some have called for McCraw's resignation after one of his troopers under investigation for her lack of action at the scene was later hired by the Uvalde School District. At today's hearing, there will be a public comment portion, and we're told State Senator Roland Gutierrez and a number of Uvalde families are planning on speaking at that time. Case says Alicia Pereira is there for the hearing and should have an update on the news at noon. We're also going to live stream the hearing on KSET.com. Right now, we're going to check in with Justin Horn for our local forecast. And Mike began the conversation this morning about the potential for some storms coming up in the next 24 hours. Yep, we're uh, all watching it there in the weather department, and we're prepared for some storms coming through tomorrow. So that's what we want to get you prepared for. Let's start with the weather headlines. And today, we've but we've begun to see a little bit of cloud cover. And we're going to see increasing clouds, especially as we get into this afternoon, a little more humidity. By tomorrow morning, we expect those storms to be moving in. It could be somewhat of a messy commute, and that's where Stephen's going to come in. He'll have more on that coming up tomorrow. But uh, Friday afternoon, that's when things clear. It'll be windy and cooler. And uh, for Friday Night Football, expect some gusty winds if you're planning to go out to any of those football games. 59 degrees right now, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 51. That number is on the rise with east northeasterly winds around 3 miles per hour. And as we look at the satellite picture, I know it's kind of hard to see there, but we are starting to pick up on some of those morning clouds. Not very thick over San Antonio, but you will find some thicker clouds as you go out west to places like Del Rio and out towards Rock Springs. Temperatures, 56 in Holotus, 59 in San Antonio. Still some 40s on the map. Places like Boulevardi, Bernie Stage up towards Comfort. It does warm up quickly today. We'll make it back to near 80 degrees, 70 at noontime. We'll call it partly cloudy, but expect those clouds to thicken up, especially as we get into tonight. High temperatures around 80. We even add in some rain chances as early as 8 or 9 o'clock, but it really is overnight tomorrow morning where we expect the heaviest of the rain. We're going to talk much more about this, the severe potential, how much rain we could see. It's coming up in just a bit. Let's go over to Stephen now and see how things are shaping up this morning. Well, you know, we'll be keeping a close eye on the roadways tomorrow morning, Justin. But right now, it's a dry commute for a lot of these drivers out there. You can see 281 at Hildebrand. Traffic's moving through there without any trouble. We still have a few vehicles left out on the roadways. US 90 at Military, very quiet shot there. And there at 1604 Northwest Military was a bit of a problem due to a few crashes that were reported in and around the area. Let's go ahead and get you to our map and tell you what we were uh, seeing out there. I-10 West on your Roland Avenue. Notice that there is a delay in those westbound lanes. We just saw it as we took that trans guide camera over here to the map. That crash is already cleared out, so that's good news, but we still see a little bit of that buildup taking place. Let me take you uh, over here because we still had a crash. It was causing major problems for quite a while off US 90 eastbound at Ray Ellison. Drivers heading in those eastbound lanes of 90 were experiencing some delays due to this crash, uh, but it does look like that is also cleared out. Now, we're taking you up here along 281, where there's still somewhere of a buildup in the southbound lanes there near San Pedro Avenue. Uh, that crash was reported earlier in the morning, but it looks like it may have cleared out. So what we could be looking at is just some of the residual congestion out there. So be prepared for a little bit of a slowdown. And I got to take you back up here to 1604 westbound at Northwest Military Highway, where we did have that crash that was causing a lot of problems for drivers that were trying to navigate their way through that corridor. Keep in mind, there are still active road closures in place, so just make sure you watch out. Of course, the roads are dry right now. Let's take it back here to Transguide. Tomorrow morning, we're going to continue to keep a close eye on things and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. The U.S. economy grew by 2.6% last quarter. The Bureau of Economic Analysis released that gross domestic product data this morning. It comes as many Americans are tightening their budgets. The report shows what the economy was like from July through September. The current reality for many Americans is likely different. Pediatric hospital beds in nine states and Washington, D.C. are already above 80% capacity, with children suffering from respiratory illnesses. Another five states are above 90 percent, including here in Texas. Kids are coming down with illnesses caused by the flu, COVID, RSV, or a possible combination. The family of the 19-year-old accused of killing two people at a St. Louis high school on Monday said they tried to take his gun away just a few weeks ago. 
A quote, third party had removed the gun from the teen's possession, but somehow he got it back. The suspect's mother originally called police asking them to take his gun, but they told her he was lawfully permitted to have the weapon, and that's when the unidentified third party stepped in. Advisors for the FDA have delayed their meeting over a potential over-the-counter birth control pill so they could review additional information related to the potential move. The pill is a non-estrogen contraceptive women could take once a day to prevent pregnancy. If approved, it would be the first daily birth control available over the counter. Tesla founder Elon Musk is getting closer to buying Twitter. The Wall Street Journal now says banks have started to send $13 billion in cash to help back the deal. Musk is expected to close the deal by the end of the week. Prices for your food are still going up, but so are sales at many food companies. Kraft Heinz is reporting net sales in the last quarter were up more than 11.5% compared to a year ago, and earnings at Kraft beat expectations. Halloween candies may be smaller this year, but prices are going up. The cost of Halloween candy is expected to be 14% higher compared to last year, according to a report from the S&P Global Market Intelligence. Despite concerns about inflation, the National Retail Federation says consumers are expected to spend about $10.6 billion this Halloween. That's about half a billion more than last year. Early voting continues today. Polls are open until 6 p.m. You can also vote this weekend and next week ahead of Election Day on November 8th. So far, over 95,000 people have cast their vote. For all our election resources, just head over to KSET.com. After 36 drawings in a row with no grand prize winner, the Powerball jackpot now stands at $800 million. No ticket matched all six numbers in last night's drawing. Cash value the prize now nearly $384 million. It would be the second largest prize in Powerball history. The next drawing is Saturday night. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your morning headlines this time, Kanye West got booted out of an office of a company he wanted to team up with. And how about Halloween on the same day every year? Plus a gas app that has nothing to do with the gas you use in your car and the same old leader in the rat race. David Sears is here. Good morning. This is kind of a nasty story. If you okay. think about rats. Right. So don't think about them too long. All right, we'll get to that in a second, but first, let's get this. After getting dropped by so many companies, Kanye West looking for a new partner to distribute his shoes, didn't find it yesterday. Another shoe company has booted Ye before he could even pitch his deal. This time it's Skechers. Apparently, Kanye just showed up at the offices of Skechers in LA looking for a new partner, but no one knew he was coming. And according to the shoe company, he just walked in and quote, unannounced and without invitation. After a brief conversation, he was escorted out of the building by two execs. They said he has spent the last couple of weeks spitting out anti-Semitic remarks and the companies have followed up by dropping him. Yesterday it was Adidas, Gap, J.P. Morgan Chase or some who've already dropped him. T.J. Maxx said no more of his clothing line in their stores. Foot Locker said no more sneakers and Peloton won't play his music for workouts anymore. For the trick-or-treaters, it's mostly about their costumes and candy. For mom and dad, safety on the night of trick-or-treating, also pretty important. The city of Cincinnati looking into the possibility of just having a trick-or-treat evening on the weekend. That would improve safety for the kids, parents, and even the drivers. They say it would also be easier on the parents who have to work during the week. Pedestrian fatalities are up to 43% higher around Halloween. The editor of the Farmer's Almanac is for it have Halloween on the last Saturday of October, but some want to stick with the tradition. If you do it on Saturday, it kind of eliminates the, the traffic, the, the business traffic. People don't leave work early to get, go, go home, get their costumes, get their children out. We want utmost safety, but I think we need to do other things to facilitate that specific day and time in which kids actually want to go trick-or-treating instead of the weekend before. All right, so in Cincinnati, Halloween's still going to happen on Monday, the 31st, but the City of Cincinnati Council will take up the idea of moving it on Tuesday following Halloween. All right, how about a positive app for that's designed to build people up rather than tear them down? It is called Gas, and it is currently ranked higher than TikTok and Be Real in the App Store. So you sync up your location and contacts to the app. Users get to vote for their friends in around polls. 
It updates every hour. It is anonymous. You use friendly ways to describe someone can even get a little flirty if you'd like. The idea build up people are gassing someone up. If you win a poll, you get a flame sent to your inbox. The polls are pre-made and there is no direct messaging to keep the bullies away. The company says its goal is to quote, create a place that makes us feel better about ourselves. It is only available in 12 states. You're going to have to check to see if it is in Texas. I Googled it and all I could get was gas stations. Sorry. Chicago known for Michael Jordan and the Cubs and the wind and Lake Michigan and the Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower. And now this, they are the most rat infested city in the country. Congratulations, Chicago. That is according to the pest control company Orkin. They came up with the results by adding up the number of rodent removal jobs they performed from September of 21 to August of this year. This is the eighth straight victory for Chicago. New York City, number two, then LA, Philly, Denver, Boston, and Atlanta, all in the top 10. So congratulations to Chicago. Another fine mark on that city's uh, resume. Yeah, we, we're the top rated city for rats. Rats. Good. Interesting. Yeah. You'd think that, well, I guess in the wintertime, they all hide out. I don't know. It's cold up there. Yeah. Still still bigger rats in New York. I'm still upset that they changed the name of the Sears Tower to the Willis Tower. But yeah, well, that's, we that's, understand. that's almost been impossible to get used to. <laughs> I know. Yeah. D David, thank you. Right now, 909, 59 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. The Halloween fun continues this morning with a trip through a haunted car wash. We're going to show you how our crew got more for their money than just a clean car. And our friend Marcus needs your help choosing his Halloween costume. He's going to be joining us in a few minutes and his handler telling us more about a costume contest and what it's for. There is a local connection. Plus, at this year's Muertos Fest, Goodwill San Antonio will be hosting a fashion show using all different items from Goodwill stores. Here are the inspiration behind these designs next. And welcome back. It's 913 to celebrate the lives and memories of departed friends and family. Goodwill San Antonio is hosting its second annual Dia de los Muertos fashion show at Muertos Fest. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the designer is combining traditions with Goodwill finds. Lots of hot glue, lots of passion and love. For months, Agosto Cuellar has been designing and creating Day of the Dead inspired pieces. We are taking stuff that has been uh, donated and we repurpose it. So this one has uh, some added extra floral roses and then we added some spiders that we found along the way and we added some glitter to them. The local fashion designer and Goodwill San Antonio team members work will be shown at this year's Walk Through the Marigolds fashion show at Muertos Fest. This is our second year with Muertos Fest and we're gonna be bringing it up a notch this time around. Agosto created about 13 outfits from headpieces to dresses, everything found from Goodwill stores. We found these were just actually some little uh, toy pieces that we found. We found the feathers, all the flowers, uh, the actual skeleton faces added glitter. Goodwill has given me the opportunity to do fashion with sustainable donated stuff and make something beautiful out of it. The inspiration behind Agosto's work is family. My grandma, Lucia, she was taught me to sew when I was like three or four. She taught me how to thread. As the event approaches, Agosto says this celebration is special to him. As a kid, I remember my, my grandpa and my grandma building altares to people that had passed away and, and the significance of what they meant, things that they loved while they were alive, things that they cherished, things that they uh, would hold dear in their life. The designer has a message for anyone wanting to do something similar. Keep your passion alive if you love what you do keep making it happen and I think everything kind of falls into place. And Goodwill team members will be modeling the outfits for the show so it's going to be very special. I'm going to be out there. Jonathan Cotto is going to be out there. Stephanie you will be out there emceeing. So another thing happening on Saturday at 7 p.m. the procession where people from the community will be honoring and celebrating the lives of people that have passed. Tomorrow I have a story about a local nonprofit on the west side that has been providing services to the community since the 60s and they will be part of the procession honoring their founder and volunteers. We look forward to that. And I'm looking forward to the fashion show and looking at these 13 unique looks. Yes, it's going to be incredible, a lot of energy, and it's a second annual event, so it's going to be really different and special. Well on our way to becoming a tradition. Yes. Thank good. you, Tiffany. Thank good you. to see you. Good to see you.
And you can find everything you need to know about Muertos Fest by scanning this QR code on your screen. It will take you directly to the information on KSAT.com. The festival will be at Hemisphere Saturday and Sunday. You can also watch our primetime special, which airs Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT, KSAT.com, and our awesome KSAT Plus app. And I know we started the day a little chilly, but uh, we're 60 degrees now. It's looking pretty nice out there. And Mike mentioned this morning, and I'm sure you'll confirm, Justin, mm -hmm. uh, for fun, that the clouds have really started to move in. Yeah, we've had a, a round of clouds moving now. I think we probably get a little sun midday, and then the clouds will thicken up again this evening and tonight, and then eventually that leads to some showers and storms. So there you see the scene outside. We've got mostly cloudy skies at the airport. Some of those morning clouds trying to roll in. 59 degrees. Dew point is at 51, and we've got light winds. Still some 40s on the map, places like uh, Kerrville checking in at 48. Everyone else pretty much in the 50s, and now even some 60s, 61 Pleasanton and 64 down there in Beeville. Upper 50s, close to 60 here in town. But these clouds right now, that'll keep temperatures down a little bit for the next couple of hours, but we still think we make it up close to 80 this afternoon. So 67 degrees around 11 o'clock, 70 noon time, and we make it up to 79 at 3 o'clock. 80 by 4 p.m. We'll call it partly cloudy, and you'll start to see those southerly winds pick up, and then the clouds thicken up overnight, and then we start to add in some rain chances. So as early as 8 or 9 o'clock, we've got a 20% chance of rain showing up. But it's really, it's tomorrow morning where our rain chances go way up, and I'll show you that here in just a second. First, let's look at the satellite picture, and you can see that little deck of clouds that developed over San Antonio. It's small, so I would imagine this will break apart pretty quickly. But a little thicker cloud cover as you go out west, Del Rio, up to Rock Springs, some morning clouds there. That may take a little bit longer to go away. Where's our next storm system? Over parts of Colorado, the Four Corners really, starting to see a little bit of a spin there. There's some snow across parts of Colorado. This system digs into Texas. And as I said yesterday, this system moves a little bit further south than our last one. So I'm hopeful that we get a little more rain out of this, but it also kind of prolongs our, uh, our uh, severe weather risk and rain chance. And so as we look at the future cast here, by 4 p.m., there are those clouds starting to move in and then they thicken up, as I said. By midnight, we're starting to see a couple of showers pop up, so drizzle, light showers overnight. And by the time we get into, say, the 6 o'clock hour tomorrow, we're starting to see storms develop out west. Here around San Antonio, it's probably just still, still some drizzle and shower activi activity, but it, it'll make the roads a little bit wet, I think. So the morning commute likely is going to be damp. Then we watch some of these storms roll in anywhere from, say, 7 to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. This is where we could see some of the stronger storms. The front makes its way into San Antonio by 11, 12 o'clock. And then the storms start to progress east, but we'll get a nice line here and severe weather will be possible even into, say, one o'clock for some of our eastern counties. It will begin to clear after lunch here in town. And as far as rainfall goes, quarter of an inch to half an inch will be common. We could see some places they'll get up close to an inch. So again, I think this is probably going to produce a little more rain than our last system, which is good news. We just don't want the severe weather. Then it turns windy once those storms pass. So this is four o'clock tomorrow and it will be blustery Friday night football. Yeah, it's going to be a little windy. The, the rain's gone, but it will be kind of chilly and windy. And then some clouds may try to move back in severe weather risk. Where you see the one, that's where we have isolated low end severe weather risk, but it is there. The higher risk is going to be east of San Antonio, where you see this darker pink color here. And the main threats are going to be strong gusty winds, isolated hail, but we can't completely roll out a brief tornado just because of the way the winds are. Something to watch. We'll be watching it very closely for you, and we'll let you know if anything does pop up. Rainfall potential we mentioned. Most of us are looking at a quarter to half an inch. Some places east of San Antonio up to an inch and then you'll get into some bigger numbers as you go east of our viewing area. Hopefully we just get some rain out of it. But as we sum it up, bottom line, plan for a damp morning commute, rainfall up to an inch and then clearing and windy conditions Friday afternoon. We'll be watching for some damaging wind gusts possible with some of these storms and some isolated hail. And we'll be here for you tomorrow to let you know how that all pans out. 76 degrees Friday after that front clears and then 73 Saturday, 78 Sunday, Halloween. We will lower temperatures just a little bit, 77, just because of cloud cover, but it'll still be nice. And then a small chance of rain on Tuesday. I like that we're in the 70s on Halloween. It should be really pretty nice.
I look forward to it. Thanks, yeah. Justin. Just about 921, 60 degrees. And after the break, we are hanging out with Marcus, the facility dog at the Children's Hospital San Antonio, and he needs our help deciding which Halloween costume to wear on Monday. We'll be right back. handsome devil. Welcome back, everybody. We're joined by Allison and Marcus from the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. So Marcus is the hospital's facility dog and Allison Sharari is a life specialist and puppyatrics facility dog coordinator. Well, right now the Children's Hospital is having a little costume contest, so uh, we're going to set Marcus up just in time for Halloween. Allison, tell us a little bit more about the contest. That's right. So Marcus has not chosen his Halloween costume yet. Mm -hmm. So we are asking uh, the community for help. So they can go and vote um, at our website for Marcus's costume. And the website is Children's Hospital SA Foundation backslash Halloween. Um, and there's three options. They are a Dallas Cowboys football player, okay. a lion, and you're seeing pictures of those, uh, yes. or a UPS driver. What can Brown do for you? It could get you a costume mark. <laughs> so there's a, there's a little selection tool they can click on uh, to select which, which of these three they would like Marcus to make an appearance on on Halloween. Yes, definitely. They can go and they can vote for their favorite costume. Okay, I see the little fill in the, the blank there. There it yes. is. So tell us a little bit about Marcus's amazing role at Children's Hospital. Yes, so he is our first facility dog. Mm -hmm. um, he works full time with me there at the hospital providing, um, you know, therape um, therapeutic support to the patients, the families, and of course the staff here at the hospital, just making it a little bit easier while they're there at the hospital. Your patch says, ask to pet me, may I? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's, I know it's late well, in the process. It says, ask to pet me, I'm friendly. So. Very friendly. We're good. Yes, yeah. he loves the pets. He's super, super friendly. Well, we know he does great work, and some Thank people you. want to help out maybe with this contest. Can they make a donation as well? Absolutely. So when they go to vote, they have the option to make a donation. We are a nonprofit hospital, um, and so the work that Marcus and I and the rest of our amazing child life team is funded primarily through donations, so we... Um, it's not required, but it is greatly appreciated, um, whatever you're able to give. And That's how long has he been ha helping out? He will celebrate two years in November. Marcus, Aww. come on up here. <laughs> yes. Come here. They want to see come your here. handsome he, he face. Laid down. <laughs> he laid down. He's laying down on the job. There he is. He's barely. Uh, <laughs> Marcus says, says, the oh, nice he's a good boy. Cool. He says, oh, you have treats. He yes. Responds. Oh, how funny. To treats. So oh, he is very food motivated. Does he have a, a costume that he prefers one over the other? Oh, or yeah, do we want to we want to tilt the balance of the election at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're going to remain neutral. Okay. Um, I think they are all really cute costumes. And as you can see from the photos, he looks very handsome in all of them. Oh, Come yes, here. he does. Come here. Well, you if you walk into me. it, see, just like that. Yeah, tell me, tell me, which, one, tell me which one you want. <laughs> I'm leaning towards the lion person. You like the lion? Yeah. I, I kind of like the UPS. The UPS driver? Yeah, yeah and of course, That's awesome. all the Cowboys fans. And to be fair, we'll have a FedEx costume for next year. Yes. Yeah, we'll Marcus, get everybody in there. Happy Halloween, buddy. Yeah. Tell wag, tell wag. Thank, thank you. Allison, thank you yes, for thank you for joining us and bringing, bringing us Marcus today. Yes, thank thanks you. for having us. I got so my cute. puppy fix. Oh, he's a sweet, sweet boy. Right now, we're at 927, 61 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. We're going in. I'm so freaked out right now. Our tunnel is the star, and, and we kind of have an advantage because we have the largest tunnel in South Texas. So more tunnel, more characters in there, right? More characters, the more enhanced and elevated experience. Our haunted series continues at a spooky car wash. Find out what our crew found lurking in the water and soap. Plus, the Spurs may have lost last night, but they went 3-1 and one on their first road trip of the season, which is a win in itself. David will be back with highlights from last night's game. And with student loan debt relief in legal limbo, what should borrowers do now? But officials are saying to reassure people that they will fight for this program and the warning for those applying. I-31, a legal challenge to President Biden's student loan forgiveness program has millions of people wondering, what now? The White House had previously said this week was the soonest some borrowers could see their debt canceled. In today's Consumer Watch, CNN's Jen Sullivan explains what borrowers and those who qualify relief should know. Debt relief in legal limbo. 
a federal appeals court put President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program on pause for now. I'm still waiting for that relief, right? None of, no one's had their debt canceled yet. Friday's move barred the administration from canceling loans, while the court considers a legal challenge from six Republican-led states. So, what does it mean for the more than 20 million people who've applied for relief so far? The Biden administration appears confident the program will prevail. We're not deterred. We'll keep fighting for you and pushing through. The administration had said Sunday was the earliest day it would start discharging loans. So people will now have to wait a little longer while the program's fate is decided. I'm one of the people that we're fighting for. Cody Hunanian is the executive director of the Student Debt Crisis Center, a nonprofit focused on ending the student debt crisis, who is also waiting for some of his debt to be forgiven. It's not going to erase my entire debt, but it's a third of my student loan debt. And it, one, opens up the door, hopefully, for the ability to purchase a home, invest in myself in a different way. The program would dismiss up to $10,000 in debt for eligible applicants, up to $20,000 if they received Pell Grants. So what should you do if you qualify? The White House is still encouraging people to apply at studentaid.gov. And the Better Business Bureau continues to remind you to beware of ongoing scams. Scammers have been right there to take advantage. They know that there's a bit of confusion about what's going to happen next. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. The six GOP-led states that requested a preliminary injunction argue that President Biden doesn't have the legal authority to wipe out the debt. Meanwhile, lawyers for the government argue that Congress gave the Secretary of Education the power to discharge debt in 2003 in a law known as the HEROES Act while George Bush was in office. Let's go outside with live cam right now. 61 degrees, kind of climbing up there, but oh yeah, I see those clouds. Yeah, inching up just barely. The clouds are going to keep temperatures down for at least a little bit this morning. Hey, my vote for Marcus was UPS worker. Oh, was right? it? Right? Me awesome too. Cute. So that's 2 1 so far. Yeah, mm -hmm. Marcus was awesome. Uh, but we got some more pictures coming up here of dogs that have dressed up. This is Meerkat, the unicorn. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, well done there. Uh, I, it looks like he's enjoying the... the yeah, comfy. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Uh, but we got a lot more pictures to share with you on KSAC Connect. And if you want to share pictures of your pet or your kiddos, whatever, and maybe some weather tomorrow, you can do that on KSAC Connect. You can access that through our KSAC weather app. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. We mentioned some of those clouds, a little bit over here over San Antonio, and I know it's still kind of hard to see. We're still getting the visible satellite images in now that the sun is... Uh, really starting to, to get up there, but uh, more clouds out west and then some partly to mostly cloudy skies here around San Antonio. 59 degrees at the airport, 58 Randolph. Clear skies just get down towards Divine, 62, 58 Rio Medina, 59 Uvalde. You're just on the edge of the cloud cover. And as we look at the case at 12 hour forecast, yeah, some clouds this morning, but then I think we go partly cloudy noontime, 70, 79 by 3 o'clock. They were up around 80 later today before those clouds fill back in tonight and we start to add in some rain chances. Tomorrow is going to be a busy day, especially first half of the day. Showers and storms likely. We'll take another look at that forecast for you here in just a few minutes. Thanks, Justin. Well, the Spurs may not have been able to sweep the Timberwolves. However, they still managed to have a winning record on the road. And that's a thing. David Sears is here with more on that in the big picture. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, we talked about this the other day that it's going to be hard for the Spurs to beat the same team twice in a row, even with that day off in between. It's not like the playoffs, and you knew the Minnesota Timberwolves were embarrassed the other night, so they were going to come out last night firing on the cylinders, and ooh, did they ever. Next thing you know, the Spurs were down 10. We were just getting started. It looked like one of those games from last year. Remember that? How the Spurs would always end up falling down and have to fight their way back. And that's kind of what it reminded you of last night. Now, Jeremy here, Jeremy Sohan, he had a double night in points. That's two nights in a row. And he had his first three. The Spurs were, were hanging in there the whole night. I mean, even in the third quarter, they got the lead all the way down to five after it got up to 17. And then it went back to double figures in the fourth quarter. And the Spurs were not able to, I think they cut it down to eight, like with two, two to three minutes left. So, but they were hanging in, I mean, you know. So they're, what, uh, one, three, lost one on the road. They're three and one on the road. That would how be you, three and how one. How do you beat that? So, yeah, good yeah. math. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. <laughs> so they're three and two overall. And, you know, you can't be too upset with the way things are going so far, Pop. Well, it's Pop. So we'll hear from him, see if he's upset. 
we were very solid in the third quarter. We were down 15. They cut it in half. Only had two turnovers. And that says a lot about the group's character. They just keep on pushing and, uh, you know, gave themselves an opportunity. Yeah, you know, one thing about it is these guys, they keep playing very, very hard, and it, it's easy to put up with mistakes when they're, you know they're out there busting their tails. And that, so that's a good thing. That's a good sign. Timberwolves win it 134 to 122. So we had 12, Kevin Johnson to 27. Yaka Pertle never double-double with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Doug McDermott, 19 off the bench. No Devin Vassell last night and no Josh Primo last night. So that didn't help because Vassell's, Playing pretty well so far, but he has a sore knee, so he sat out last night. They come home, and they play the Chicago Bulls on Friday night. And then look who comes to town on Sunday. Do we have that one up there? It's the Minnesota Timberwolves on Sunday. Oh, those guys. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, how many times you got to see those guys in a week? Three or four. You know, I guess. <laughs> they're going to be good friends by the end of this. So, uh, by the way, they're three and two. I think they dropped from third down to seventh in the West. But uh -huh. guess who's last in the West? Guess, who, guess who's last? Would it be that team we love to talk about, the L.A. Lakers? Oh, and four. Wow. The big old goose egg. And one one yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Love that. And Devin and Josh being out, we're starting to see some of those key players now, and, and it makes a difference, doesn't it? Oh, it makes a big difference. Yes, for sure. So we'll see how Devin is on, on Friday. Let's hope he can yeah. go against the Bulls. Hope and, so. And the on Bulls. Sunday. <laughs> and on Sunday against Minnesota again, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, Didn't we just see you? See you? Yeah. Is there any other team in the NBA we can play? Apparently not. <laughs> later. Guess later. Not. Yeah. Thanks, NBA schedulers. All right. Yeah. Not, thank you, David. 938, 62 degrees. You're watching DMSA at 9, and when we come back, our spooky trip through a haunted car wash here in San Antonio. 941, we're continuing our Halloween series this week. Of course we are with a trip through a local haunted car wash. It's over on Bandera Road near Grissom and we sent our morning executive producer and our evening executive producer to check it out. Take a look. So we are at a haunted car wash. That's right, this is a haunted car wash. This massive line of cars yeah. that is coming up behind us are all about to get scared in a haunted car wash. And they're out on the road. Like, they're all the way out. People are waiting just for a chance to go through this. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. And uh, we wanted to do something for, for the city of San Antonio. Halloween is such a great holiday, right? And it's a kid's holiday. And just to see the kids' faces light up and have fun, it, it, it's all worth it. We'll have to check it out. We'll find out how well the kids held up to it compared to us. They might have done better than we did. <laughs> Maybe. Probably. We're going in. I'm so freaked out right now. Our tunnel is the star, and, and we kind of have an advantage because we have the largest tunnel in South Texas. So more tunnel, more characters in there, right? More characters, the more enhanced and elevated experience. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. When our, our team come up with this idea, uh, we didn't know it was gonna blow up like it did. It definitely exceeded our expectations. sooner. <laughs> That's an amazing idea. Yes. And it's pretty good. And kind of creepy. So it said Bandera out near Grissom, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in checking out the haunted car wash, head to caseout.com for more information than I just gave you. <laughs> and we have one more haunting experience to show you. Tomorrow, our crew checks out Haunted Oaks, which is a haunted house that's open at Rolling Oaks Mall on the northeast side near Live Oak. So stay tuned for that. Okay.
Let's do get it. Two things at once. Yeah. You can do two things at once. We had a, a oh wait, it's gone no, now. It's I was going to say, can we get the Halloween <laughs> forecast? Uh, kind of a preview once again. Yeah. There it is. Thank you very oh, much. Oh yay! Yeah, there it is. There you go. Uh, Thank you. Halloween's looking good. Love this that. year. You it's, know, a lot of times we get fronts and it's either really cold or it's it's warm. Today's this go round, this Halloween's going to be somewhere in the middle, probably Perfect. 70s, some clouds. So really, it is shaping up to be pretty pretty good. Uh, first, so let's talk about football. We got some football tonight, Thursday night football. And temperatures will be in the 70s for kickoff by halftime 75. So not a big change here. Clouds roll in. It will be a little more humid. It will be windy. Southerly winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, but not as windy as it's going to be for Friday night football. Big change because we've got a front coming through tomorrow morning. So it'll be very different as we get into tomorrow night. As for today, 70 degrees by noontime. We'll lose some of those morning clouds we have out there right now. Then we make it all the way up to 80 this afternoon. We'll call it partly cloudy. There are those southerly winds, pretty stout. And then tonight, clouds really start to fill in, and we start to get some rain chances by 7, 8, 9 o'clock. So, yes, for some of those Thursday night football games, there could be a few sprinkles, maybe a light shower, but nothing that should impact the game as far as lightning or anything like that. And as we go outside for you right now, we've got a blanket of clouds over top of us, at least at the airport. And temperatures are at 59 degrees, 51 the dew point east northeasterly winds at about three. There are some of those clouds. You can see them right over the I-35 corridor. Some morning clouds that have developed, and then we have a thicker cloud deck out to the west. Uvalde over to Del Rio, where it is overcast to sour. And we'll zoom out some. And this is what we're waiting on. So you see the spin of the atmosphere here on water vapor. And this storm system starting to gain strength. It strengthens even more as it moves into Texas and it digs pretty far to the south. So I like where it's moving, its location for us as far as rain goes. Now, we're still not going to get a ton of rain out of this, but I think it's going to be better than this last system. I think you'll see some slightly higher totals. So there it is. There is some snow associated with it as well up towards Denver, starting to see some rain out ahead of it, and that is what is headed our way. So let's time it out for you. Future cast here. Clouds begin to roll in again this evening, and then we go mostly cloudy to overcast overnight. We fast forward to midnight. That's when we're starting to see some light showers, some drizzle popping up. And as it pertains to our morning commute tomorrow, maybe the storms aren't quite to San Antonio yet by 6 a.m., but we're still probably going to have some wet roads out there with some light showers and drizzle around. And then we start to see these storms rolling in 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. This is when we could see some stronger storms. And so we'll watch for the potential of some gusty winds, maybe a little bit of hail mixed in with the stronger storms. And then that sweeps east by midday. I think we're probably starting to see this activity move out of San Antonio. So really, it's just a morning thing here. And then it uh, does transition into our eastern counties by 1, 2, 3 o'clock. A common quarter of an inch to half an inch. Most of us are going to see somewhere uh, something around those numbers. Uh, some of us, though, could get up to an inch, if not a little bit more in spots. So that's what we have to look forward to as far as rain goes. We just have to deal, unfortunately, with a little bit of Severe weather, I think, in spots. Then it turns windy. I mentioned Friday night football. This is where gusts could be up to 30 miles per hour out of the northwest, and it's going to be a little chillier. Uh, we're not going to see any rain or anything like that, but be prepared if you're heading out to the games tomorrow night for uh, windy conditions. And then maybe a few clouds move in uh, tomorrow night into Saturday morning. As far as the severe weather risk, these areas shaded in dark pink is where we could see some of the uh, more scattered severe weather. But I think really anywhere across the area, uh, that potential is there. And the main threats are going to be some gusty winds, isolated hail, and there could be an isolated brief tornado. We can't rule that out, but it's not going to be a, a huge, huge issue. Um, it, it is something to watch just because of the way the winds are setting up. And we'll be here for you to let you know if there are any warnings that come out. So here's what the plan for. Uh, damp morning commute tomorrow up to one inch of rain, clearing and windy by Friday afternoon. And here's what we're watching. Damaging wind gusts, possible with storms. There could be some isolated hail. And make sure you have the case that weather app. That's where we'll uh, be keeping you informed all day today and tomorrow. And we plan to go live on the app uh, if necessary. We think that we'll, we'll be there uh, after GMSA coming up tomorrow. So you can join us there if, uh, if we do have activity on the radar. 76 Friday. 
73 Saturday, 78 Sunday. It will be windy on Saturday too. Sunday, a beautiful day. And then Halloween, as we mentioned, not bad. 77, another chance of rain shows up on Tuesday. Best weather team in town. We know you guys will have us covered. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Right now, 949, 63 degrees. A local shop loves Halloween so much, they celebrate it year round. And we come back a look inside the business and its creepy friend that might give you goosebumps. Might. <laughs> will. Why wait until October 31st? That's the motto for one local business. This Northside shop deals with Halloween 365 days a year. And as Katrina Weber shows us, it features one item that can give goosebumps even to goblins. From its eerie entryway to all its creepy corners, this is more than 1,200 square feet of scare. It's a combination of costume pieces and collectibles just right for Halloween and beyond. You know, I always had like a love to like collect anything like horror related. A love became a living for Candy Dulcinea after COVID killed off her corporate job a couple of years ago. She opened stickers and stars near Thousand Oaks and Jones Maltzberger as a way for others to share in the spookiness. This self-proclaimed vampire feels right at home. Do I sleep in a casket at home? I'll never tell. Do I want to suck your blood? Well, I'll never tell either. With all of this merchandise, there's no doubt that this is a horror lover's dream, but there's at least one thing here that's not for sale. All right, follow me. Back in her own scary space is where Sarah the haunted doll hangs out most of the time. about that smile, we do feel it changes. Dulcinea adopted her by accident when she bought the tiny coffin from an oddities dealer. We couldn't get her out. Uh, the coffin is like, not just like shut, it's like sealed, it's sealed shut. It seems that Sarah doesn't exactly stay put though. Dulcinea believes it's this ghostly girl who's been making her presence known, pulling pranks like knocking down clowns, and literally making customers' hair stand on end. That reputation now has people coming in just to see Sarah for Halloween scare any time of year. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. On a serious note, we do want to get back to the top of what we mentioned at the top of the newscast. A hearing is happening in Austin right now related to the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. Now, the director, director of DPS, Steve McCraw, is testifying right now before the Public Safety Commission. He and his department have been at the center of the outrage over the delayed law enforcement response to the shooting. Uh, some have called for McGraw's resignation. Here's a couple of things we can tell you. Uh, Senator Roland Gutierrez has already spoken, as well as some Uvalde families have testified as well. We're also hearing that McGraw has announced that the Texas Rangers are expected to wrap up their investigation by the end of these this year. And we have a crew in Austin right now covering this hearing and we'll have the latest on the news at noon. We are live streaming this hearing on KSAT.com so you can check it out on our website. Yes, if you go to our app or our website right now, it is a link at the very top of the screen. And our producer was telling us McGraw is on the, I believe, the left side of this shot right now. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more at the news at noon.